So, the big question is this. How are ambitious people like us, who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. As usual, I'm your host, Manu Jagarwal. And today I'm talking with an expert entrepreneur, Brad Taylor, about how he got started with entrepreneurship and built it into a successful business by understanding the power of entrepreneurship. So welcome, Brad. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, Brad is a well-known entrepreneur and has graciously consented to this interview to share his extensive knowledge and experience and wisdom uh, so that every entrepreneur in our audience can understand the true power of entrepreneurship. Um, So let's jump right in. Uh, The first few set of questions we will ask uh, Brad is about your background and experience uh, so that our audience can um, relate to your experience and where you are coming from. And then we will dive into, you know, the entrepreneurship and uh, the core questions that we want to share with our audience. So uh, to start off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of your background, education and experience? Yeah, well, I've kind of always been an entrepreneur all my life. Um, When I was very young, had a paper out, then got another paper out, then started a landscaping business. I think it was in my DNA. Okay. I I couldn't wait until I turned 16 to get my first job and subsequently got another job that really was the foundation of setting me, you know, setting me up as a true entrepreneur. And that was my true first mentor. Um, As far as schooling, I did a little bit of schooling, but I couldn't stand it. I wanted to just be that entrepreneur and I couldn't see myself, you know, in a class at the time. In hindsight, probably business classes would have been really good for me. Mm -hmm. But the thought of not being out there and, you know, learning and learning from really talented people, which I did. I was very fortunate. Um, My first true entrepreneur was the original founder of the largest drug chain in the country. Wow. And uh, it was Bernie and Terry Shulman. Bernie Shulman started Revco Drug Stores Mm -hmm. in the late 50s, early 60s. And then subsequently, they started their own a uh, very large deep discount drugstore in Cleveland, Ohio. And that's where I really got my experience, as you would say. That's awesome. Yeah, real life experience is much more valuable than, um, than any college degree, for sure. It is. You learn, you learn things that you would never learn in school. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so let's uh, share some of your early experiences when you started your own business. Um, something that uh, uh, entrepreneurs in our audience can learn from and maybe use in their own journeys as well. Yeah. So after I, I really grew up in the retail business, as I mentioned, Mm -hmm. and um, was really involved in that for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, And then in my uh, uh, late thirties, I made a decision uh, to move from Sarasota, Florida to Portland, Oregon with my wife. Okay. And uh, we bought a franchise or distributorship there, which was in the publishing industry. Uh And uh, we sat my in-laws down in a family-friendly restaurant and we were so excited and we shared our new venture. And my father-in-law stood up in the restaurant and everybody watched him use words I won't even say. Uh Uh And he told us we were going to fail and we'll be back in six months. I see. So that was, and we were moving from Sarasota, Florida to Portland, Oregon, which was almost 3,500 miles. Yeah, yeah. So that, those words were both, I would say, motivation, Mm -hmm. and uh, we had to make this thing work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And uh, so we started in the publishing industry in the early 90s. And we knew nothing about the publishing industry. Uh, my wife was a pediatric nurse. Okay. And I came from the retail industri- industry. So I knew how important customer service was. Yeah. And I knew about marketing and branding because that's what you did in the retail industry. Yeah. But I didn't know anything about sales. And I didn't know anything about publishing. So, you know, it was, it was quite scary. Uh-huh. And uh, how did it go then? Um, uh, was it a success? Uh, you know, well, the, fir- the first year was like tough. Mm-hmm. You, we moved to a city. We knew no one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I didn't know much about publishing, and I didn't know anything about sales. I was on the other side of the desk with everybody selling me literally everything from soup to nuts. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of feel I felt I feel real bad today about how I treated some of the salespeople mm-hmm. because, you know, now I'm part of our job is in sales, but um it, I plugged into a system right away of listening to motivational uh audio cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no DVDs at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And and one of the motivational speakers that I really could uh really understand I related to him was Les Brown Mm -hmm. and and Les Brown would tell me if you don't have a white chalk mark around your body it's a great day Mm -hmm. and when I was when I was when I was having a bad day he picked me up and when I was having a great day he gave me high fives but I'm going to tell you I wore more cassette tapes out driving around from appointment to appointment and uh if I hadn't plugged into some type of motivational system, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. Uh, but the first year was tough, and we started to scale our business. And within a matter of, I think it was seven years, we had opened up 14 magazines, and we became the largest uh, publisher for the company that we represented. Wow. And after about a year, maybe a little over a year, one day I went to my wife and I said, it would be really good if we could work together full time because at the time she helped me around her nursing career. I see. So probably six months after we had that conversation, she gave up her license after she worked so hard to get not just an RN license, but a pediatric, you know, yeah. and um, we've worked together for over 25 years. Wow. That's awesome. And so are you still in the same business or you've, uh, you've moved on to other businesses? Well, that's a great question. So we got out of that uh, specific publishing business and in the early 2000s, um, we saw a niche for a specific uh, type of business, which is uh, marketing to high-end luxury realtors wow. and builders. So we started a company, it's called Luxury Home Magazine, and today we print over 150 million pages a year. Wow. And uh, it's really interesting since we started that specific brand, how the paradigm has shifted from social media, digital, everything. Because when we started that specific brand, there was no social media. Yeah, yeah. Uh, websites were strictly flash driven. Mm-hmm. There was no digital platform. Yeah. And so over the last, uh, you know, 13, 14 years, especially, we've really had to, every several years, you have to realign what you do. Yeah. yeah. And, and when I started in the, in the publishing business in the early 2000s, you know, one of the questions you asked is what was my tools? Yeah. yeah. My tools were a bag phone that cost about, two dollars to talk on per minute yeah, yeah. a pager and uh uh you know an answering machine with with you know people don't a lot of younger people today when you talk about this they don't they can't comprehend what, yeah, what, what I know, yeah you know, you know what i'm saying but yeah we, we used to have rotary phones and yeah long distance charges like there was no tobacco. oh it was crazy yeah yeah I, I remember those days i i practically used to spend uh, you know, 70 to 80% of my income monthly on just phone calls because it used to cost so much. I wish I had my bag phone today just to show my, 
my kids as they grew up, you know, because they can't, or, or, or how big a cell phone was, is, you know, it was about uh, 13, 14 inches tall, and it was like a brick. They used exactly. to call them bricks, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, so you brought up two uh, really important points besides the two you mentioned. Um, one was about mentors, and another one was about motivation. So I think, um, yeah, you know, those are really important aspects. Maybe maybe you can elaborate a little bit and the importance of these two things in the entrepreneurial journey uh, that people undertake. I think everyone should have mentors along their journey, um, especially if they're going to be, they're setting out to be an entrepreneur or business owner. You have to have somebody you can, you can talk to that you can relate to and mentors are so important um they really my my first mentor her name was mrs shulman terry shulman she she one of the things she told me is don't ever ask somebody to do something you're not willing to do yourself mm -hmm. so in the retail business don't ask someone to unload a truck if you're not willing to unload a truck yeah. and she came into the office every day dressed so professionally, but yet when, time, when things were busy, she'd be running a cash register or she'd be stocking a shelf. And I really admire that. And to this day, I still use those principles, you know, because you have to lead by example. So when you run a company, you're the one that has to lead by example so people don't think it's beneath them to do something that you're you know and so i preach that and i that's how i basically run our organization i want everyone to see that it wasn't beneath me to unload a truck or to do whatever and i think that's one thing that people have admired about my wife and myself is we lead by example and everything that we teach them to do we done yeah so and and and, and that's what makes it that's what makes our organization so successful. And it, I think it brings a different culture into your business as well. For sure, yeah. What was the other question? You had two questions. So the other one was about motivation because, you know, entrepreneurship is, is up and down journey. You know, any, anybody who has been in hit on that uh, path will understand. And, and motivation is very important, especially, um, you know, if, if um, entrepreneurs don't have support of their family or or they are you know, spread too thin and you know they need to make money really fast you know and that's happened that happens in in uh, in everybody's journey um right so, so what can they do to uh you know pull themselves up and and uh, get themselves going again well like like myself in the 90s i plugged into motivation through um cassette tapes today there's so much out there with social media alone you can get motivated through podcasts like you're doing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Video, posts, social media posts. Um, there's just so much out there. And I think you have to find specific people. Maybe they're in your industry or not in your industry because it really doesn't make any difference. But to me, I love to hear the stories. Yeah, yeah. Because I can really relate to motivational speakers by stories. It's also reading, you know, your knowledge is power. And, and it's the old saying, if you think you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And I think sure. what makes a good leader is listening, then talking, but also acknowledging if you don't know something or if you make a mistake. And I'm sure we'll get into that in a few minutes. Yeah, some of your questions. Sure. Um, and I hope the relationship between your uh, father-in-law is better now. Oh, yeah, he's awesome. Uh, uh, you know, when he retired, um, I had just purchased several years prior a, a Corvette. And uh, when he retired, I had my uh, uh, almost brand new Corvette with a couple thousand miles on it sent to Florida. Yeah. And I uh, gave it to him as a uh, retirement gift. That's awesome. You know, we hang out all the time now. That's he, great. He, That's he great. tells me he tells me that he did that just to motivate me. <laughs> of course, of course, my mother-in-law at the time she was mortified of what he said. Yeah, yeah. But okay. but um, I will tell you this: there isn't a week that goes by that I don't tell that story to someone, some group, mm -hmm. 
because there are going to be people that are going to tell you, why are you doing this? Are you crazy? You're too old. You're too young. That little voice in your head is telling you, I probably shouldn't do that. Exactly. And you can't listen to all these people because, you know, they're going to talk you out of your dream. They're going to talk you out of your aspiration. Yeah. And, and as they say, you know, the dreams are left at the graveyards exactly. because people want to do it, but they're, they're afraid to do it. They're afraid to, to take that risk. Yeah. Yeah, completely. I completely agree. And uh, uh, that's a wonderful story to share for sure. And, uh, you know, that goes in, in, uh, in line with, uh, you know, get some motivation, get some positive thinking in your life and just go for it. Well, it's the old saying, you hang around who you want to be around. Exactly. If you hang around negative people, you're going to be negative. Mm -hmm. If you hang around positive, uplifting people, you're going to be extremely positive. And I mean, I believe your attitude is so important in everything you do. Yes, yes. It's not just in business. It's personal with your kids, everything. Exactly. All right. Um, now let's get into the nuts and bolts of uh, building a small business. So um, let's, uh, uh, let's start with um, your journey itself. Uh, you started uh, way back and you've gained a lot of experience. What will you do uh, differently if you were to start your business all over today with the, with, the, with the current technology, the tools, and the constraints that people have today? Well, you know, I, I tell this to our team all the time. Social media is incredibly awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, our social media platforms for our company, we have millions and millions and millions of impressions a month. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, our business, our traditional business is built on relationships. Yes. And I think that, you know, when you and I are, when I first started in this business, there was no email, there was no social media, there was no texting, there was no Dropbox. Yeah. You called someone up, you set an appointment up and you met with them. Yeah. Well, today technology can be a deterrent because people think, they can be extremely successful just sitting behind their desk. Yeah. And so what they're losing is that relationship, that eyeball to eyeball, handshake to handshake relationship. So I think that as much as I love technology and as much as I love all aspects of building technology into your business to scale it, our businesses today are still built on relationships and it doesn't make any difference whether you're a technology company yeah. or you're a uh, publishing company like media company like we are or you're a retail business yeah, yeah. because uh, relationships are the core component of building your business in addition to the culture of your business yes. Yes. because you know, people ask me all the time, what's the hardest part about scaling your business, expanding your business? Yeah. And my word is people. Yeah. If you don't have the right people, I don't care what location you're in. I don't care what kind of business you have. You will fail yes. because your, your people that represent you are a direct reflection of you and your brand. Yeah. And that's true in any business today. For sure. And, and you have to maintain the relationship with, uh, with people who are working with you as well so that they are motivated and, uh, and you know, work, um, push in the right direction, basically, and work with everyone collaboratively, right? Yeah, I talk about that in my book that I just wrote. Um, relationships are so important. And, 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 you know, just because it's easy to email someone or it's easy to do business over the phone, I'm a big... I promote to our team, our organization, go meet your people in person, develop relationships with your people in person because you, you are the brand. Yeah. Yeah. You're the face of the brand. You need to go out there and show that because otherwise, you know, social media today is also in some ways it, it portrays, for a personal level, it portrays how great your life is, but maybe your life isn't that great. It's kind of a facade. Yes. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, you, uh, you hit the nail on the head there. 
Uh, now let's uh, take it one step ahead and and uh, uh, you know can you give us some specific advice about how people in this digital age can develop relationships um, uh, you know you said that uh, you know going in, uh, meeting people in person is is uh, is recommended but what if they are conducting business on the internet how can they develop those relationships um, you know digitally or virtually well, that's a great question. Uh, so, are we going to jump into software later, or you want me to go over software too, right take now? Away. Take it take, away. Take it away. So, so, I think today, no matter what kind of business you're in, you need to have some type of CRM. Okay. You know, some type of uh, of software that you're able to put your contacts in and put notes in. Yeah, yeah. You know, I tell the story in my uh, in my book that our dentist, every time I go to the dentist, he knows everything about me. Mm -hmm. And he picks up on our last conversation. So one day I asked his wife behind the desk, how does your husband remember everything? Yeah, and yeah. she says, he puts all his notes in that night. Mm -hmm. And then he pulls up the notes of all of his patients. And he's able to start continue the conversation. It's no different, regardless of what business you're in. Yeah, I think that, that, you know, it's human nature for us, no matter what we do to talk. And we, we, we share stories with people we communicate with on trips we took, you know, children, grandchildren, um, cruises we may take. Those little pieces of information need to be stored in your CRM. So as you're having a conversation, you can say, hey, how was your last cruise? How's your grandchildren doing? How are you going to know that information if it's not stored in your CRM? But with that said, your CRM also is an important component to sending out email campaigns. Yeah. And, and so what you can do is you can create video that shows you and it allows you to talk a little bit about your brand. It allows you to create and capture value in the product or services you're representing. And um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do two book signing events the same week, one in Nashville and one in Charlotte. So what I did is I created two videos, one for Charlotte, one for Nashville, and then one together. So I'm going to be able to utilize those videos as I get closer to the dates. So I'm putting a face behind what I'm doing. And then the bookstores in each location will be able to use those videos also. But, you know, video is very powerful today for sure. in helping you, you know, represent whatever you're trying to accomplish yeah those are those are great tips. Um, you know definitely a CRM even a basic one uh, will be will be good enough to get started with and uh, video obviously is a very powerful medium today um, they say you know 80 percent of the traffic on on the internet by year 2020 is going to be video so definitely leveraging the power of video is um, very important well what's also really neat is if you put video in your subject line of an email you have a much larger chance of that email being read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, if you put video in the subject line of your email campaign, whatever you're doing, you'll have a higher percentage of people that, you know, yeah, yeah, that, view that. your email campaign. For sure. Awesome. Now, you, you're running a very, um, you know, uh, elaborate business. Uh, I want to talk about time management. How do you manage your time and, um, you know, still uh, are able to be on top of everything that goes on in your business? Well, you know, that, that we, you know, we don't have enough time. <laughs> but I will tell you this, and I, I, I dedicate a chapter in my book on time management, uh -huh. visual, a visual um, setting, visual goal setting. But I think that no matter what you do, whether you're a student, your your whatever profession you're in, having proper time management is so important. And years and years ago, my wife and I went to a seminar, and this this gentleman talked about how important it is Sunday to sit down with your spouse, significant other, and plan out your week. Plan out, you know, what you're doing with the kids, what you're doing together, and and what you're doing, you know, individually. And I will tell you, it changed the whole way we were able to run our household. No. But with that said, 
goal setting goals and having um, time management is like huge. And I see people in our industry and other industries struggle. Yeah. They're so unorganized. Yeah. And I and I think also part of time management is prioritizing your time. Exactly. Yeah. In other words, if you're in the sales arena, you don't want to be doing stuff that is non-related to sales between say nine and three. Yeah. That's when you focus on sales, meeting people, talking to people, whatever it may be. Do the minutiae stuff or the things that aren't as important either before or after. Too many people, they try to do a little bit of everything and they end up doing nothing. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'm a big believer in visual goal setting. Setting up your goals and setting up tasks you want to do and having them so you can see them 24-7. Yeah, that's awesome. Because your goal will be achieved if you'll have a much more success rate of really achieving your goal if you're seeing that, what you want to do every day. And it could be something as silly as just writing it down on a big piece of paper and hanging it on your, uh, on your wall. That's great. All right. Um, now, uh, you are in the public, publication business, uh, but do you use any other um, uh, magazines, any newspapers, any online resources to get information about business and what's happening um, in the field of entrepreneurship, technology, and uh, related fields? Yeah, I'm like, a, I'm always seeking out. I think when you run a company, it's your job to constantly be seeking out what's new, what's next new. You know, it's kind of funny because I didn't know anything about social media or digital content or, or anything. You kind of self-teach yourself. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I remember when we started with Facebook. Yeah. And now today, I think we have like almost 200,000 followers. That's not probably a lot, but to us it was a lot because we started with zero, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, and so when Instagram came out, we started on Instagram. And I remember when Google Plus came out, I jumped on Google Plus and then they contacted me and told me they had to shut down my account because I set up a personal one. But they said they really liked what we were doing, so they, sh they, they, they turned it into a business account. Awesome. And now Google Plus is gone. Yeah. As of uh, May, it's, it's no longer in existence. Yeah. When Pinterest came out, man, I jumped on Pinterest. And today, I mean, our company has over 300,000 views a month on Pinterest. Wow. And Pinterest is just another way to drive traffic to your website. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge part of social media today. People don't get that. Yeah. Social media drives traffic to your website. So um, I don't know if this answers your question, but I've kind of tried to learn about different technology over the years. Yeah. I remember when, when in the late 90s, the first CRM we started was ACT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. It was, it was owned by Semant Semantics, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then it kind of wasn't working right with a lot of software. So we kind of dumped ACT and we moved on. I think ACT now is pretty high tech, but we've moved on to other software programs that are more f related to our business. Yeah, yeah. But you can get into different types of CRMs and there's really no expense. Yeah. If you want more specifics, then you're going you're gonna to have to pay because of what they bring to the table. Sure, for sure. But yeah. I think that for me, it's, it's constantly getting information, reading, um, knowledge is power. Yeah. And I set up a lot of Google alerts. Sure. So I set up Google alerts based on specific industries technology areas that we're moving into. And I probably have about 60 Google alerts that are going off at any one time. Yeah. That feeds me a lot of information. And then uh, there's certain websites that I like to visit, which also give me a lot of uh, 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 information. And I think that, you know, the more information you can be part of, it really helps you not only grow as a person, but it helps your company or your business or the brand thrive. Yeah. So, so to summarize, like you cannot be complacent. Even if you know you reach a certain level of success, you continuously have to gain more information. Um, you know, keep a pulse on on the market. And as you as you just rightly pointed out, you know things change. Like 
even even within the realm of social media some social media platforms come and go and you, you constantly uh, need to update yourself right well i think the paradigm of of business in general is constantly changing it's changing almost so fast that you can't stay up with it yeah. i mean literally we are redesigning our web platform almost every year uh -huh. okay we're 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 constantly learning about the do's and don'ts in social media because social media is constantly changing yeah. the way you post the times of the day you post yeah. um you know hashtags what works what doesn't work i mean it's almost a joke because we're constantly playing with different things we have one publisher in nashville they have over sixty thousand followers on net on their instagram account on in our nashville publication sure and and we love to compare notes with them and i think that that you always have to be seeking out what's the next best thing to continue to grow your business I, my attitude is it's not about what you're doing today or next year it's what are you going to be doing five years from now that's going to be differentiating what you do take your business to the next level that's great all right so let's talk about um, how to make a small business extraordinary um, uh, what makes a business extraordinary and how can entrepreneurs drive their business to that level I think it starts by having a great foundation mm -hmm. um, you know when you start a business you got to be an expert in that business and and we have a very niche business our media company luxury magazine is a very niche business it's not covering everything from manufactured homes to million dollar homes. We really focus on just luxury. And I think that's the future in our industry alone. It's having something which is a niche that people need. Um, I think that what makes your business successful, as I mentioned, is people. Having systems in place, processes of doing everything. Yeah. You know, our, our training manual up to four years ago was 500 pages. Wow. Since then, we've created everything online. So we have, a, we have a secured website with a bunch of quick reference guides. It's like tutorials, yeah, yeah. how to do everything, even down to how to set up an email signature, nice, nice. how to set up a LinkedIn account, cool. the do's and don'ts of setting up social media. Every time we have a question, we set up a quick reference guide, which then we can send our team to, so they don't have to bother me anymore because we have everything in place. That's great. And we're always changing that because the evolution of your business is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have a system and process for everything. I think when you're doing a business, you can't do everything yourself. Yes. So you have to find out what you're good at. And then you have to hire people that are smarter than you to do other things. And a lot of people, they struggle with that because they want to be the smartest person in the room. So business owners are stubborn because they feel that if they hire somebody smarter than them, that they're compromising, you know, their business or they feel that, you know, they, they just don't want to do that. I think that you have to hire experts yes. in certain things. Completely. Um, so we have a specific person in our traditional business that does social media. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm not involved in social media or my wife isn't involved. But you can't do everything. Yes. And I think a lot of businesses struggle and ultimately fail because they try to do everything themselves and then they end up, end up doing nothing. And it's, because, it's not because they're not working hard, yeah. but they're not working smart. Exactly. And there's a difference. So you have to focus on what you do best and then hire people to do things that you're not an expert in and then that will make your business thrive and grow. All right, great. So, what is the true power of entrepreneurship? Because uh, you know, you you did mention that earlier. Um, what is the power of entrepreneurship, and how can it be harnessed uh, effectively? I think when you're a true entrepreneur, you have to do something that you have a passion in. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not passionate about what you're doing, you probably won't last. And I think when you're setting out to do something, you can't have a plan B. Yeah. Because I talk about this all the time. I, when I was doing a book signing uh, a couple of weeks ago in Seattle, I, I, I specifically talked about this with someone in the audience. They asked a question, and then for 10 minutes, we talked about this very subject. 
when you when you when you want to start a business and you you start a business with the idea that if it doesn't work you can do something else you're probably not going to succeed because because there there really is it when you start a business it's not going to be great i tell i say to people all the time i say Regardless of what you want to make out of your business, it's not like driving through a fast food income, fast food uh, 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 drive through. You order a six figure income and you drive out. Yeah. Starting a business is tough. It's hard. You're going to go through adversities, challenges. You're going to fall on your face a few times, but that's what makes you a better person. That's what makes you learn from your mistakes. And, and, I think that some people don't get that. They have this idea that they're going to buy this franchise or they're going to start this business, but if it doesn't work out, within six months, they can go back to something else. And if you have that mentality, that mindset, you're probably not going to be successful because when times get tough, it's easier to go to their comfort zone of of going back to their traditional business. But if they just would have stuck in there a little bit longer, they would have been really successful. Yeah. So, so one piece of advice I give to a lot of entrepreneurs is when you're starting something out, starting from something from scratch, you're buying a franchise, you got this idea, you have, don't have a plan B. Because if you have, have a plan B, then don't even waste your time. Because it's kind of like, you know, there's, a, there's a, one motivational speaker, he talks all, of t- all the time about, you know, he goes to the island, he, he, the, the, they go to the island and they burn the boats and they can't get back. So yeah. they have to make it work. Yeah. But, um, entrepreneurs have to have a passion, a burning desire that they think about this all the time. And, and that's, that's really what they want to do. They also, you know, people that are entrepreneurs, they want something better in life. Yeah. And all, the majority of the people that came into our organization have education you only hope your kids have. Mm-hmm. They have master's degrees. They have education that they'll never use. but they worked at the traditional business and they wanted something of their own. Yeah. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs today, they want that ownership. They want something that they, they can leave to their kids or something that's theirs. And they're waking up every morning knowing it's theirs. Yeah. And I think there was an article that was published recently that 40%, I think it was of every of the Americans in the next five years are going to be entrepreneurs business owners yeah, that's you know great. yeah that's great yeah um yeah i mean uh, they want they you know entrepreneurs they they have uh, uh, you know typically they want freedom you know freedom of uh, their location freedom of their time freedom you know financial freedom so uh, that's what drives them and you're absolutely right if you don't have passion when things get tough you know it's really hard to get through that time I think it's also that you have to have that belief and confidence. Yeah. You know, people struggle with the confidence. They struggle with belief, especially in sales. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and you can you can read a person and know pretty quick that person isn't confident in what they're doing even though it's their own business. Yeah. So, having confidence, having that belief, having that passion, having that right mindset and attitude is just a few of the intangibles that really make you successful in business today. Yeah, very true. All right, great. So is there anything else that you would like to share? Uh, we are coming to the end of the interview. Uh, anything else that I have not asked or something that you'd like to share uh, for our entrepreneurs? I think that a lot of leaders, a lot of people that own businesses, they run companies, they have to take responsibility for what they do and they can't point blame point that you can't point blame on others in other words if something's not going right you just can't blame other people in your organization yeah. because your organization your team is what truly makes you successful so in other words one of the beliefs that i have is is you collaborate with your team you don't make your team feel like they're not part of certain decisions yeah. They may not be part of all the decisions or the final decision, but I think it's important to ask your team what's important to them. Yeah. When we built our last website, I literally spent almost a year asking our team, what's important to you? 
what would you like to see on the website? Yeah. And there's certain things that I'll do is I'll run certain things ar- around certain people of expertise and ask them, you know, but I think as a leader in running an organization or running your business, it's important to collaborate. It's important to take responsibility when something potentially isn't going right. And I think it's really important to be transparent in what you do. Because like I mentioned to you, the culture of your business is why people want to be part of it. Yeah. You know, it, it's, they want to be part of the right leadership. They want to be part of, of your group when you treat people right. You, t- you, you listen to people. You have empathy. You have compassion. Um, I think that's a huge part of growing and scaling your business. For sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that advice. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the interview. I'm sure uh, everyone in the audience uh, learned a lot about how they can build extraordinary small businesses. Thank you so much, Brad, for sharing your wisdom and experience. Now, before I let you go, can you tell us a little bit about your book and uh, your company and uh, you know how you work with entrepreneurs um, and uh, what kind of uh, what kind of services do you provide? Well, I think in the last 25 years, as my wife and I started to work together, people would ask us all the time, how can you work with your wife? I could never work with my wife. (laughs) And so part of my book, Intentional Success, Power of Entrepreneurship, consists of chapter one is the 12 intangibles of success. Mm -hmm. The intangibles that I feel were the foundation of our success over the years. A huge part of my book is about all the mistakes my wife and I made that hopefully someone else won't make. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we didn't know anything about background checks when you're hiring someone. Just silly things, but they're so important. We talk about, you know, how the importance of, of setting up your bookkeeping or hiring someone to help you with bookkeeping so that you're not consumed with bookkeeping when you should be running your business. Yeah. Um, we talk about working together as a couple. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of couples, they struggle because one wants to be in charge. Yeah. And I think if you both define your responsibilities and you both have that vision of being successful, it's not about who's in charge. It's about just growing your brand, growing your business, and we talk, we spend a lot of time on it. That's probably the number one question we are asked monthly. Oh. How do you two work together? Mm-hmm. And we've seen a lot of couples that have failed and then aren't even married anymore because they thought they could work together and it ended up to be a disaster. Yeah, yeah. So if you're thinking about working with your wife, read my book because my wife and I wrote a whole chapter on that. That's great. Um, but it's, it's really our, my book was written because people constantly said, you should share that in a book. You should talk about that in a book. I have a whole chapter on sales, you know, and customer service. And then I have a whole chapter on, on goal setting, mm-hmm. visual goal setting, which I'm a big believer in to this day. But that's really my book, Intentional Success, The Power of Entrepreneurship. I appreciate you, uh, you asking about that. And our traditional business is luxuryhomemagazine.com or Luxury Home Magazine. And like I mentioned, we're really excited because we've, we're at 150 million pages we print a year. And we have never solicited anyone to open a magazine for us. Every single person that came to us organically came to us. They did a search. We showed up. And, uh, they wanted something more in life than home to work, work to home. That's impressive. Awesome. Really impressive. Uh, yes. What I'll do is I'll uh, grab those URLs and uh, link to your book as well. I guess it's available on Amazon. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and a and a lot of small independent bookstores. I have a book signing coming up in Nashville okay. at Parmesis Books, and I have another book signing that same week at uh, uh, Park Road Books in Charlotte. So thanks a lot, Brad, and thank you everyone in our audience uh, for tuning in. I hope you learned a lot today from Brad. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So again, I'm Manoj Agarwal, and thanks a lot for joining us on the Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. 
I'm guessing there are a lot of type A ambitious personalities in the audience today. And you guys are always busy thinking about your next big move, your next plan to conquer the world. I know because I am also constantly trapped inside my own head. To avoid stress and live a healthy and happy life, I highly recommend Ziva online meditation course. This course is taught by world renowned meditation teacher Emily Fletcher. Trust me, meditation has been scientifically proven to reduce stress and heal chronic ailments. So if you want to learn meditation then you would want to check out this course for sure I can vouch for it it helped me tremendously go to go.tetranoodle.com/z1 that's go.tetranoodle.com/z1 and now I'd like to invite you to check out my software consulting services and professional training programs at www.tetranoodle.com We provide world-class consulting services on anything related to technology and software and we are growing very fast in the areas of education and professional training for software and IT engineers. If you enjoyed this episode then please do share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes to get automatic episode updates for our bootstrapping your dreams show. And finally, please take a minute to leave us an honest review and rating on iTunes. They really help us out when it comes to the ranking of the show and I make it a point to read every single one of the reviews we get. Thanks for listening. Stay happy and curious. Have a great day.